In early human societies, the responsibility of contacting the divine, the supernatural, belonged to one person, the shaman, witch doctor, or medicine man. My search for these individuals continued in northern Mexico, where I joined a pilgrimage into the desert in search of a mind-altering cactus. Eating it would give me a real chance of seeing the hidden world of the gods. I was with the Huichols of the Western Sierra Madre. The pilgrimage is, to them, a journey to Eden, the land of their gods, and the place where the sacred peyote cactus grows. In order to enter the desert and eat the peyote safely, we'd begun to separate ourselves from everyday life by confessing publicly our sexual sins and changing the names of worldly objects. Matsua, an apprentice Marikami, the shaman of the Huichols, was in charge of the pilgrims. He'd been helping me understand what was happening, and, with his advice, I was hoping for my first experience of the spirit world of the Huichols. We'd been travelling, first on foot and then by bus, for two weeks. In the next few days, we'd be in the desert proper, and our search for the peyote would begin. For now, we were near the desert margins, and busy with our final preparations. Along the way, we'd left offerings at various sacred sites. Now, wood brought from their mountain homes was being made by the pilgrims into arrows, which would carry the prayers of the family members who hadn't been able to make the pilgrimage. The Wichol's gods demand respect, and making the arrows look beautiful is one way of showing it. Feathers, given to the pilgrims by their families, were attached to the arrows to make sure they flew high into the heavens. Each feather had itself been prayed over and blessed, and once the new arrows had been anointed with deer blood and sacred water, they'd be ready to be presented to the gods. The peyote pilgrimage used to take up to four months to complete on foot. With a bus or truck now the only option, because of the roads and fences that blocked their way, the Weechols can finish the journey inside a month. At last, we were at the gateway to the sacred desert, so everyone and everything had to be blessed by the Marikamis and elders before entering. The gods demand purity, not only physical, but spiritual. Fasting and a lack of sleep had helped us further separate ourselves from our mortal state, essential if we wanted to eat the peyote and meet with the gods. It's the first time that we have seen this stretch of desert because the first time his eyes were covered, like all the first timers, except this is such a sacred place that you'd be overcome on the first visit here. If you're able to see it. The feathered wands of the Marikamis and elders act to sweep away mortal concerns and continue the transformation to a state of innocence. The peyote grounds were still some way off, and there was one more sacred site we had to visit before the hunt for the cactus could begin in earnest.
Tati Matinieri is a spring now on the edge of a dusty Mexican village. To the Huichols, the spring is a goddess who in the distant past transformed herself into water so the Huichols might survive droughts. The local Mexicans regard the Huichols with a mixture of amazement and irritation. Despite a government sign demanding that no one other than the Huichols use the spring and the barbed wire put up to protect it, the grazing animals and the litter strewn about pollute the sacred water. The significance attached to places like this lends credibility to the Huichols' belief that once they lived as hunters in the desert, dependent on such springs. Despite living hundreds of miles away in the mountains, an area full of springs and streams, they still remember Tati Matinieri and give thanks to her. Water from here is collected and taken home to be used in ceremonies throughout the year. The local youths have been told to get off the fence and show a bit of respect. But you sense the problem isn't just with the young, it's with everyone around here. There's a lot of murmurings. No one would say anything to my camera, but uh, they're not happy about the way the space is being treated by outsiders. For the primeros, the first-timers, this site is so filled with spiritual power that they'd be blinded if they saw it without being fully prepared. Only after they'd been blessed and introduced to the goddess could they be anointed with the water which to the Huichols has the power to heal and purify the souls of the pilgrims. Driving through this sacred area was a strange experience. Deserts have always had religious significance, perhaps because here, above all, there is silence and uncluttered space. But driving a 40-seater bus through here didn't seem to bother the pilgrims. Their minds were focused on the search for the peyote, which would allow them to contact the divine. An exciting moment, this. The gathering before the first search for peyote. But they're talking about a hunt and they're preparing bows and arrows because peyote is intimately associated with Kayamari. And so we're searching for this deer, hunting him down. And it's said that wherever he has just trod, there you'll find peyote. This once pristine wilderness has in recent years been taken over by ranchers who've erected miles of fencing and graze their cattle and horses through it. They also burn the cacti to make grazing easier. Others take the peyote to sell as a recreational drug in the United States. On each visit, the pilgrims find less and less peyote. It's a popular medicine in Mexico, applied in a poultice to relieve arthritis and muscular pain. But to return home without peyote would be disastrous, a sure sign of the gods' displeasure and a threat to the existence of the world. Okay, I... Uh, 
Está jodido ahorita, este no tiene. Sí. Our first day's hunting was unsuccessful. Despite hours of stalking through the scrub, there was no peyote to be found. We drove deeper into the desert, to another site where last year the pilgrims had found lots of peyote. But there was a real sense of concern. To return home without the sacred cactus and its ability to allow communication with the gods was unthinkable. Prayers at daybreak on an important day, not just for the Huicholis, but also for me, because wherever I've been in the world, I've always had to hear about the spiritual dimension second hand. But here, today, through this plant, beauty, I should see it for myself, or some semblance of it. Not what they see, but something that I can at least measure for myself. Marcelino, the violinist, told me what had happened to him the last time he was here. Search party fans out, and I do hope we have better luck this time. Oh, uh, here's one, I think. The Weechols are extremely careful when gathering the peyote. They approach it slowly, calling it beautiful names, and leave the roots in place so the peyote will continue to grow. Everyone collects individually for their families back home. They have to gather a huge amount, as it has to last them until the next pilgrimage, at least a year away. you think, how can it be beautiful? Because it looks so ugly. <laughs> but of course it is beautiful because of its power, its potential, what it's given these people, which is an understanding of their world and a glimpse and insight into another one. Cascabel. Oh yeah. <laughs> doesn't look very edible and of course it's not. <laughs> the reason why they're hallucinogenic is that they are full of alkaloids. These alkaloids are, well, they're toxins to try and discourage grazers like us humans. Todavía 
así empellotado, chivado, pues hay veces me asustan en los pajaritos como que cantan y, y la rama que me si parece que estaba el venado corrió así y con, con tanto miedo. <risa> Hasta alguno que, 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 no, que no aguante, pues lo tiene que echar el balazo para, para, para tomar la rama. <laughs> One of the Maricanes had located an enormous peyote plant. He said it was here the Kayamari, the sacred deer, had come to earth, and here that the first peyote must be blessed and eaten. The decorated arrows were placed on this sacred spot to carry the prayers of the pilgrims' families directly to the gods. One little peyote has been selected for me. I'm quite glad it's a small one. Los primeros come más, ¿no? ¿Tiene miedo? No. Primeramente lleva. Lleva. Thank you. Test it. This is the first one. 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 Yeah, hey, I can get that See, Saka. Oh, good. See, I'm going to take off the hair. That's good. Ah. <laughs> 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 Right, it's my turn. A bit of orange. Ah. <clears throat> Bitter. I got away lightly. The Primeros had to eat a lot more than anyone else, around 60 segments, in order to ensure they had a direct experience of the gods. They were guarded by the Marakamis, who made sure they were well, but also that they ate every piece given to them. Half an hour or so has gone by without any apparent effects. So I've been generously given some more. I couldn't help feeling relieved at having to eat only a dozen pieces, but that was enough. 
I sat down on the desert floor to look at the world, which seems much as it ever did, but comes and goes a little. And there's a distance between me and everything around me at times, and then everything is in my face, people a little bit too near, the cactus limbs coming out at me, coming and going, as if the desert has got a heartbeat and uh, everything, even the stones, are chirruping, moving, vibrating, coming towards me, going away a little bit, and then a great deal. I was glad I had the Weecholes around me. Without them, the experience could have been much more dramatic, as many in the West who've taken it recreationally would testify. Uh, <coughs> I feel like a fish. No, it, <laughs> that's going to sound wrong. I have a sensation of floating, and it must be like this if you're a fish floating in between the weeds. No, I don't think that's going to make sense. But <coughs> The day had been a success. Beyond the feeling of mild euphoria, there was a tangible sense of relief that there was enough purity here to take home. The gods were once again summoned to witness the work of the pilgrims, and as night descended, we slipped into our own dreams and let the gods talk. The effects of peyote are an individual experience for the Weecholes, much like a dream. There's no collective group action, just an overwhelming feeling of calm and communion with everything around. But being Weecholes, to whom laughter and music are as sacred as a prayer, it was natural to celebrate. And Marcelino began the refrain he'd learned in Wiracuta the previous year. As they danced, the pilgrims recreated the various stages of their journey to the revered land in which they were now fully immersed. What I felt was, above all things, a state of liberty. Not sure what I was anymore. I felt released. It must be a feeling that's all the greater for people like the Wicholis and other shamanic societies who are forever striving for harmony with the world around them apologizing to animals that they have to hunt, to plants that they have to cut. Suddenly, that didn't matter, you were released because you were in harmony at last.
I wanted to know what other people's experiences have been. Most of all, I wanted to talk to David, one of the first timers, who'd eaten a huge bowl of peyote. Y este, y se me abrió un panorama desde la primera vez, desde la primera vez porque, porque yo no oculté nada. No oculté nada, fui sincero ante, ante el fuego, ante Cauyumari, ante, ante ta, 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 ta Cauy, que es el sol, y jamás le oculté yo nada a él. Y entonces yo, desde un, desde un principio me, ab, me abrió un panorama, un panorama, y ahora, y ahora ya me viene haciendo disfrutar, me viene, vengo disfrutando de todo conscientemente. With the peyote gathered, there was one important task left. We had to climb Cerro Quemado, the highest mountain in the desert, to salute Cayau, the sun, as he rose once more over the horizon. No, pues, y que te dijo votar a Ana por Mujeca, y te dijo votar a la ciudad de Ana por y que iba a ir a la ciudad de Ana por Mujeca, su curso se motivó, mujer se motivó, y que está en la ciudad de Ana por Mujeca. Ana está en mi, Ana está en ti, y que iba a ir a la ciudad de Ana por Mujeca, y que iba a ir a la ciudad de Ana in just a second when the sun comes over the horizon that really will be the start of the end of this journey because this is where the sun is said to have been born and we visited the last of the sacred sites. The sun will now retrace our steps, crossing over the land of Wirakuta, west to the Sierra where we started. The pilgrimage was almost over, but my search for the world's medicine men wouldn't be complete without a visit to the very place from which the word shaman emerged. I was on my way to Siberia, where after decades of Soviet persecution, shamans were once again on the rise. <laughs> 